Hello everybody, this is going to be my third attempt to try to do a basic video on how to operate the Spooky hardware without having any software um, controlling uh, attached to it, no computer and so forth. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn the Spooky on. I have channel 1 and channel 2 already connected to my oscilloscope. And I'm turning on, and it's going to come on at 1000 kilohertz with a 10 volt amplitude and voila, channel one and channel two both came on at the same frequency. Now there is nothing set in this here, uh, um, spooky at the point in time, um, to turn on and have those two frequencies look like they're in sync. If I turn channel two off, I can do that by using these buttons, these three buttons. Okay button turns both channels on and off. It's a toggle switch on and off, on and off, on and off. I'll leave it on. The right button will take, will turn channel two on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. And you notice they don't look like they're in sync anymore. That's because there's a sync option that's not turned on. Channel two is coming on just arbitrarily wherever it feels like coming on when I turn it on and off, on and off. And of course the button to the left of the OK is the uh, channel 1. If I press that, because I'm syncing on channel 1, the, the scope goes blank. Okay. Okay, that's only because uh, there's nothing to sync on. I'm going to turn channel 2 back on, and that's by hitting the right arrow. It's back on. And again, it's not in sync anymore. It's just arbitrarily starting wherever it wants to start. There is a quick, dirty way. Um, to get them in sync without making any other adjustments and that's to turn both frequency off and turn them both on electronically at the same time and that's what the OK button does and now they're in sync again but it's just because of the timing of how they were both turned on exactly at the same point in time in real world if you wanted to have channel 2 follow channel 1 you would go in and set up the sync option that's in the spooky let's do some basics first before we get there um, the Spooky has a memory, and it's called F5 key. Next to it is the word M E M for memory. If I press that F5 key, the first thing it allows me to do is to either select a f frequency I want to play with, frequency from one, from actually zero zero, that's supposition, all the way up to ninety nine. There's a hundred memories that the Spooky can store, and in memory position zero zero dial it all the way down to zero zero is what the spooky uses as a startup it says when I turn on what am I going to load all the settings that I'm capable of loading and it says I think I'll go look in memory position zero and whatever's in there that's going to be my startup um, uh, parameters I've already set this startup memory position zero zero to come up with channel one and channel two both running at a hundred um, uh, 1 kilohertz, 1,000 cycles, both have 10, amp, uh, 10 volts of amplitude, both have a uh, offset of nothing, zero, offset is set to zero, both have a duty cycle of 50%, but on a sine wave, you can have a duty cycle of anything. Duty cycle does not affect sine waves. It only affects triangles and square waves. We're using sine wave right now. So 50% uh, could be 40% duty cycle, and it would still look exactly like that where a square wave would actually have a, 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 a disproportionate uh, on relation to its off uh, pulse width. Another subject for another time. <laughs> All right. Um, I just want to show you something while I'm here. I have right now dialed zero, zero, and you just saw when I first turned the spooky on, they came up running. I'm going to go back to um, the beginning screen. The beginning screen, by the way, is when the word OK is, is there in that little middle section um, between channel 1 and channel 2, and the word OK is there. And there's the word OK. I've gotten myself back there. I'm going to turn both of these frequencies off by hitting the OK button. And you can see the red off off in channel 1 and channel 2. I'm going to jump to memory. And I'm going to have the Spooky now start up with all those parameters set, but don't actually start running the uh, oscillators. 
and I'm going to say save in position zero. And unlike when I first started this video, when I turned the Spooky on, I'm going to turn it off. When I first started the spook Spooky, those frequencies started up once the Spooky went through its initialization. I just saved the parameters, all those parameters, but I said don't start until I tell you to start by pressing a button. And you can see that's exactly what happened. We have the OK button uh, word in here. That means we're at the initialization screen, the very first one. We always start from this screen and when we start pressing buttons. And if we don't know where we're at, we return, 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 which is the F1 key, to get back to get that OK in there. So we have a place of common startup. When I talk to people over the phone, I say, you press the F1 key, press it until you see the word OK in between channel 1 and channel 2. And I, that way I can talk them in how to how to do things, how to what buttons to press and so forth, but we always start from this screen here with the word OK in the middle. OK. Um, let's, let's go over some basics. F2 right now has a word channel 1 and F4 has a channel word channel 2. You, you can see it on the screen. It means if I press the F1, anything I do now is going to act on the uh, channel 1 window. If I press I don't even see an option to press anything else except pick a wave, a frequency, or an amplitude, or go to next. That's the F5 key. It says there's more to follow, more options. Let's take a quick look. I just press the F. Oh, yeah, there they are. Offset, duty cycle, and phase. Let's press the up arrow, which means go back to those other selections. And I have wave frequency. I'm going to hit wave. That's the F2 button. And now I can dial in waves. I can dial triangle. I can dial in um, where's tri there's triangle, square wave, and sine wave. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and get that OK. Hit F1 to get myself to the starting window. Didn't do it quite. Got to hit it again. There's that OK. And I'm going to turn both frequencies on. And look at that. I got channel 1 showing a triangle wave, and I didn't do anything with channel 2, so that still has the original sine wave. I'm going to hit channel 1 again. That was the F2 button. And I'm going to hit the F2 now. It says word wave. And I'm going to dial that back to a sine wave. Now, what if I want to adjust the wave for number 2, uh, the channel 2? I notice I have an option to jump straight over to channel 2, and that's the F2 button again. Yeah, these verb this verbiage changes next to the F button, so you look at it and read it. I'm going to hit the F2 button, and now if I play with this dial, it's going to change the wave function for channel 2. I'm going to leave channel 2 as a score wave, just because I can. Let's Go back to the reference screen that's hitting F1 once, hitting F1 twice, and then there's my OK again. So I can change amplitude. I can change um, phase. I can change offset. I can change duty cycle, um, wave, and frequency, depending on which window I've decided to start with. Do I want to start with channel 1 window and start making changes there, or channel 2? It's your call. Um, I want to jump now to invert sync. Uh, I think you can play around with these windows and you can get there from here pretty quickly if you had your spooky and you were looking at it with a scope or just looking at the images here. It's nice to have a scope in the background where you can actually see what's going on. But I want to do invert sync. What is that all about? I want channel 2 to always follow channel 1 but be 180 degrees out of phase. That's what you do when you use the Spooky Boost to create one bigger, instead of a 20 volt peak to peak signal, you create a 40 volt peak to peak signal. In actuality, I found that the Spooky can't quite do 40 volts peak to peak, do 38 maybe. It depends. The lower the frequency, the closer it can get to 40. When you get higher in frequency, um, it takes a little bit more power from the electronics to try to get that extra stretch from plus and minus 40 volts if you went and dialed in 20 on each channel. Um, another story. How do we get to channel 2? How do we get channel 2 to follow channel 1? 
Well, if I select channel two from the OK window from the start, and I go to this down arrow, which will right now it's got wave frequency and amplitude. Press it one time. Oh, and now I can adjust offset duty and phase, but there's more. If I press the down arrow again, oh, look at that. There's a word sync. Too cool. <laughs> it's right next to the F3 key. I'm going to press the word sync, and what do I have? I have the opportunity to make channel two follow channel one in three different ways. Follow the frequency, whatever channel one's frequency is, channel two will go there. I can make it follow channel one's amplitude, whatever amplitude channel one is at, channel two will go there. And same thing with duty cycle. I can make channel two always follow channel one's duty cycle. For this particular presentation, I just want to make the frequency of channel two follow channel one. So I'll press TF, tune in to frequency, boom. And in that middle window comes up an F. And that means that it's, I, I've chosen a sync option. I want channel two to sync on channel one. And I'm going to return now by hitting the F1 key back to get that OK window. One, two, three. Wow, I was really far down deep into that menu. Um, drilled down into the menu, as they say. I got the OK here. So we're back at the reference window, I like to call it. And I'm going to do one more thing. While I'm here, I'm going to go to channel two and change that square wave back to a sine wave. So I, F4 is channel two. And now I have a wave option, frequency and amplitude. I want the wave. I hit F2, and I'm going to dial in a sine wave. Now I have both of them completely the same. Ooh, look at that. They're 180 degrees out of phase. I don't know if I did this already or I left it in from a previous setting. I had phase angle on channel 2, 180 degrees. Well, that's exactly what I want. I'm going to go back to the F window, F1, one time, F2. got my OK reference window here. I guess I had left it a 180 degree setting when I was doing a practice run of this video. Well, let's go down into channel two and let's play with that angle and see what happens, that phase angle. Press it down, I press down here once, to, oh, there's it, it's, there's my option. I see the word phase, it's against the F4 key. And I have a little cursor sitting on the one of the 180 degrees out of phase. I'm gonna move that cursor over. I can move that cursor left and right with these arrows now. I just moved it over the eight and I'm gonna dial. Look at that. Look at the look at the shift that I'm putting in. I can put them in perfect phase. And that would mean I have set it for zero. And I did there. I have a phase angle of zero. I can go to 90 degrees. Look at that. I have channel two following channel one. And it's 90 degrees out of phase because I dialed in the phase window to 90. I can dial in into 180. And... There they are, completely out of phase. 180 degrees out of phase. Where, where valley meets the crest. The valley of channel one meets the crest of channel two, the peak. And uh, just move that a little closer, you can see they're right on top of one another now. Yes, they are. 180 degrees out of phase, too cool. So you have to go into channel two syncs options and pick follow the frequency, and then you have to come to the phase of channel two to set the, how, how far you want it in or out of phase. This is called invert sync in the software. What is running right now is called invert sync in the software. If I wanted to turn this feature on, whenever I turn the spooky on, I would go back to memory position zero and save it in memory position zero. And I would have all these features, in invert sync in this case, already set. Spooky would come on just like that. Perfect. If I wanted to um, save it in some other channel, because I was going to have a whole bunch of, we'll call them presets, hardware presets. I was going to set up channel 1 in memory, channel 2 in memory, channel 3 in memory, all with different settings. I was going to go out and perform um, 
some first aid, <laughs> um, spooky first aid on 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 some cat or dog or something, <laughs> and uh, give them some frequencies, healing frequencies. Um, and I didn't want to have to keep referencing a, a book or anything else. I wasn't taking the computer. I could preset a lot of those options in channel one, two, three, four, and five, all the way up to ninety-nine of them in the spooky. All right, that is my basic presentation on doing some basic adjustments, including invert sync and including storing in memory. Um, I hope that you find it helpful and that's it. So have yourself a nice day.